Finding your own style is an ongoing process of exploration and experimentation and questioning, but where do you look for clues? I began my search, as I think many of us do, by studying the paintings of artists I admired, watching their videos, reading their books, maybe even taking a workshop. Eventually, it dawned on me that not everything I like to look at will work very well in watercolor. For example, in oil painting, it's not too difficult to have that turquoise water right next to the orange and yellow tones, but that's tough in watercolor. So, at least for the purposes of my style in watercolor, I have to think about the things that are possible or feasible with my chosen medium. And then there were things that I like to look at, but honestly don't have the patience for. I would say to myself, I'd never learn to draw this well, but in fact, I could if I was motivated to. So I also have to think about things that I actually enjoy doing, or at least that I want the results badly enough that I'm willing to put in the work to get good at them. It turns out that the work that I do now takes every bit as much patience as that red lily, but it's a different type of work and I enjoy it. And then there's the question of whether the subject matter and the overall associations with the style are authentic to me and would express something that I would find meaningful. I might find a cute kitten in a flying saucer amusing, but I don't think it's important enough to me to want to spend the time rendering it in watercolor. So finding my style isn't just finding a look that I like and learning how to do it. It also includes what I like to do, what I want to say, and probably a bunch of other things that aren't in this diagram. There are lots of options online and in museums and galleries to explore what sorts of things I like to look at. And there are a lot of resources about what's possible to do in watercolor. But sometimes it's a little harder to figure out what I want to express and also what I like to do enough to continue doing it over the long term and get really good at it. This is one of the things I use my studio journal for trying out different things and making notes about what I do and don't like. A lot of this is just open-ended experimentation and free play that might or might not ever make its way into any kind of finished paintings. But I'm collecting things I like to do in the same way that you might collect things you like to look at, and eventually some of them work their way into my evolving style. I find that the more I do this open-ended, free play, the less I'm concerned about how I might ever use it or how wacky it might be. But in the beginning, it was kind of difficult to free myself to just play and do whatever crazy thing came into my head or felt like fun to do with my brush. So I decided to make some videos and share with you some of the exercises or games that I play with myself to help me get started when I want to do some free play and break out of the mold of whatever it is I've been doing. So in this video, I'm going to share an exercise I call Take It to the Limit. The idea is simple. Start with a painting or drawing that you've already done and pick one aspect of it that you like and create a new painting that exaggerates that particular feature. So in this case, I liked the pink in the sky, so I created another painting that really exaggerates that pink. And I tell myself to really take it to the limit, really exaggerate it. Now, one thing that happens to me when I try this exercise is that making a big change like this to even one element tends to kind of throw off my ability to focus on other things. So very often I do another attempt where I take a deep breath and calm myself down and tell myself just because you're using a wild color doesn't mean you have to throw everything else you know about watercolor out the window. And in this case, I actually even decided to try it a little larger and see how I would feel about it if all that pink was covering more territory. For me, this isn't necessarily about trying to rescue a painting I'm not happy with or fix it in some way. It's more about seeing how I would feel if I really exaggerated that one feature. In fact, I'm not wild about this bright pink, but because I was being bold with the color, 
I was also bolder with the values and handled the trees in a more relaxed and expressive way. And that gave me the idea to take a scrap that had a wash that I wasn't happy with and try experimenting with a different way of painting trees that uses some of those marks and shapes that I like to make with my brush. And I really like this. These trees really feel like me. Here's another example that starts from what was going to be a value study of a sunset over the ocean. And I was working in ink. I thought I would outline some of the main shapes and then fill them in. And it just was not working as a value study. But I liked some of the shapes. So I decided, what if I just did an outline drawing of the shapes that interested me the most? And I really like this as an abstract. And then I abstracted it even further. I'm not sure whether I'll create a painting based on this or not, but I really like where it's going. In this example, I started from some brush drawings of hummingbirds, and I thought, what if I really exaggerated the colors? Just went crazy with rainbow iridescence. And then, of course, those shapes I like to make got involved, too. I decided to give it a try in watercolor, and for me, this is just a bit much. It looks kind of like a cross between a hummingbird and a peacock. Although rainbow colors really aren't working for me, but I kind of like all those swirly shapes. So back to that shape making again, I decided to push something else to the limit, the shape making that I like to do. And again, this hummingbird I really like. It starts to feel like me. So just because I'm pushing one thing to the limit at the beginning doesn't mean I have to stick with pushing that same thing all the way through. One more example in a bit more realistic style. In this sketch, I really liked the purple in the distant hills and the sky. So I created another sketch where I exaggerated that purple. And here you can see I went by a much smaller step than I did with the pink in that other painting. And I kept everything stylistically much more realistic. Even though I'm using more playful mark making in my larger paintings these days, my travel sketches are still fairly realistic, and I seem to have to go through this stage on my way to creating more abstract or impressionistic pieces. So take it to whatever limit feels good in a particular situation, and stop when you arrive at something intriguing that you want to explore further later, or a painting that pleases you.